Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and this great community of brilliant subscribers with fantastic comments. As you can see, I'm not wearing glasses today, so I can't see myself in the camera, but at least you can see me. There was a big glare from this ring light. I don't know how to how to make it go away, but anyway, we will proceed. So um, I got a, a subscriber request from a lovely new subscriber who's made some fantastic comments in relation to the silent treatment, which she is going through at the moment, post discard or post escape. The silent treatment, guys, I'm going to talk about what it is and then I'm going to talk about why the narcissist uses the silent treatment and how you can make it very ineffective. The silent treatment is only as effective and powerful as you decide it will be. Now, the, the silent treatment is a manipulative tool that the narcissist uses and every narcissist that I have ever come across uses the silent treatment. That's not to say that sometimes when people have an argument with you and won't talk to you for a while, that's not to say they're a narcissist. The silent treatment is a prolonged and frequently used manipulative tool by an individual. What is the silent treatment? The silent treatment is a total invalidation of the other person's existence by not talking to them, but also by not acknowledging them in any way. It's as if they were dead. That is as far as the narcissist takes it. So there's a few different um, categories of silent treatment that the narcissist uses. One is when you're actually with them, when maybe you've had a disagreement, you're not doing what the narcissist wants you to do or suggests, or they're just annoyed at you for some reason that you don't actually know about. They will give you very short, matter-of-fact answers and speak to you on a need-to-speak-only basis while having wonderfully friendly conversations, exaggeratedly friendly conversations with anyone else that comes into the room, their sphere, um, their space or on the phone to them. The only way that this will stop is when you ask them what's wrong, pander to them, begin to worry, um, try and talk to them, ask them, what can you do to make up? Or you'll know that you've done something the narcissist doesn't want you to do and then you'll agree to, to do it just to stop them from being like this with you. And they will slowly, uh, once you do what whatever they want you to do, they'll slowly come back to normal and then they'll probably reward you with a fantastic day or a fantastic few hours and be really loving to you. In other words, they're reinforcing, do what I say. If you don't do what I say, you're going to suffer for it. And if you do do what I say, I'll give you a reward for it. So we know the next time then that they start being a little bit short with us, it's warning bells go off in our brain and we're groomed and conditioned to obey because we know if we don't, we're going to get a lot of um, coldness from them and invalidation. And if we do, we'll get rewarded. So that's the... The first level, I would say, that you'll experience from a narcissist. The second level is when you're still with them and they actually will treat you as if you are not in the room. You can pass by them and they're looking at TV and they continue to look straight ahead. It's as if you've become a ghost. They won't speak to you. They won't acknowledge that you're in a room. They won't look at you. They'll talk to everyone else again around you. And they may even go to a different room when you come into a room or just after and stay away from you as much as possible. And again, they're looking for the same thing. This is an increased, um, an increased part of the silent treatment. Let's call it the B part of the silent treatment. The third part of the silent treatment is 
if you've escaped them or they've discarded you um, and you're no longer, say, living together and they don't acknowledge, they don't answer any of your texts, you may see that they've read them, but they don't answer them. They ignore any kind of communication you make with them, even through a third party. They ignore you on social media. They probably probably block you. They would block access to themselves in all ways. So that's the third type of silent treatment. It's obnoxious. It's actually very detrimental if you take it in a certain way. It can be very detrimental to the person because as a human being, we need to communicate. We need to be seen, heard and feel part of something. Um, it, it, it's in our DNA to to be safe with the group, like from times way back, if a person was ostracized from a, from a group, they would have a high possibility of being killed or, or, or die alone. We need the group, the human group to feel safe and to feel, feel human, feel part of something. So it's in our DNA that we need to communicate. It's a real, it's a basic instinctual need for a healthy a human being. So guys, why do they do it? The main reason the narcissist uses the silent treatment is to control. It's actually, in effect, a very, very immature emotional response to not getting their way. It's like a, a child in a schoolyard who doesn't get what they want from their friend and they say, I'm not going to be friends with you anymore. I'm not going to talk to you. I'm going to make new friends. You have caused them some type of injury. They don't want you to know that. So even if they've discarded you, I can assure you that they felt a loss of power and control over you. They know that you're more powerful and they have to bring you down. They have to put you under them so they can feel over you. If you don't know about the silent treatment, what it is and why it's used, it can be extremely effective because, guys, you're in a relationship with this person and it's been it's a narcissistic relationship. So it's highly intense and it's highly, you know, in a way, codependent, even if you're not a codependent, it becomes like that. The narcissist will have isolated you from a lot of people. So you're getting validation on an unhealthy level from this person. Now you're in this relationship and you're in love. This is a relationship, a, a very important primary relationship in your life. And suddenly, without warning often, that person is gone, just gone, like as if they're dead. And then if they invalidate you by not allowing you to talk to them or to discuss it or to ask questions, or even if you've left them and you need to communicate in some way and they will that not so often when you've left them, it usually happens when they've discarded you, but it can happen the other way. So what the narcissist is trying to do is to wrong foot you. You have caused them a narcissistic injury because you have not. You have not stayed under their control. They felt that you were more powerful in the relationship, that you weren't supplying them with their needs, that they were losing control over you. You were copping on. And what they did was cruelly discarded you. But to compound that, they use the manipulation tool of the silent treatment. The purposes of it are mainly so that they can leave the situation feeling powerful, feeling that they have control over you. And over a period of time, you will probably look for answers and go and chase them looking for answers. And that maintains their sense of power and control over you. And the less answers or the less communication they have with you, being the silent treatment, the more control they feel they have over you. 
The second reason they use it is to cause you pain because that gives them power and control too. The third reason they use it is so they do not have to be accountable. They don't have to listen to you saying, well, why would you do this? They don't have to listen to questions that brings them back to the reality of what actually happened and would make them look at what happened. They don't have to take accountability if there's no communication, if it's as if you're dead and it never happened. And they can beautifully reframe what happened and reframe, rewrite history and give give that history out to their coterie of family and friends and new supply. They can make it all clean, wash down and blame you for everything that went wrong. They can also use it as a provocative tool because honestly, if you don't know what's going on and you don't know what's happened and guys, you've just left this, they've just left you in this state after you were in the middle of a relationship with someone and they've just disappeared. Your mind is spinning every which way. You don't know which way is up. You need answers. You feel you need answers. You also maybe think there must be something wrong with them. Um, maybe they're going through something. Can I help them? If I keep reaching out to them, maybe there's something I missed. Did I do something wrong? It, it causes you to reflect in on yourself a lot. And they know this. Some of them, some of the narcissists just kind of do it instinctively. Instinctively, they've used it in other situations in their lives and it's always worked for them. So they know instinctively that it'll work. Some of the others actually plan it because they know that it's a mind manipulation tool and they do it purposefully aware of what they're doing. Diabolical. The other reason they do it is to really punish you. They want you to feel pain, hurt and anger because they actually do blame you for everything that's gone wrong. You've let them down. You didn't work out. You stopped giving them what they needed. How dare you go against them? How dare you look for something for yourself? How dare you want an equal relationship? You should have admired me, worshipped me. You were so lucky to have me. So many people want me. I am fantastic. I am perfect. I gave you everything that you could possibly want. And all you want to do, this is the way the narcissist sees it, all you want to do is talk about what I've done wrong and how to make things better from your point of view. It's all about you. This is the narcissist projecting. It's all about you and I don't want to hear about you anymore. You haven't, it hasn't worked out. I'm well rid of you. You deserve everything I'm doing to you and I don't want to know about you. And for quite a while, they actually don't want to know about you because they're searching for your replacement. And if they have your replacement and if you're chasing them, as we said before, they just use it against you and use, use it to tell the replacement how crazy you are. And the replacement or the new supply tells them they were so right to get rid of you because they can see from the amount of times your phone is ringing and the emails you're getting that definitely you know, your ex-partner was unhinged, Mr. Narcissist or Mrs. Narcissist. And I'll be your new solution. And they may be very well a nice person or they may be another narcissist or whatever. But the silent treatment causes the ex-victim target, survivor now, guys, survivor now, thriver now, warrior now, strong person now. But anyway, it causes the person immense mental anguish and confusion and difficulty and makes it so much harder to recover from the narcissistic 
abusive relationship. So we've covered the reasons that the narcissist does it. Just keep in mind that the main reason is control and it comes from a place of the narcissist not having the capability, no, no emotional maturity, a very, very low level of emotional maturity. It's a basic reaction to not getting your own way or to feeling uh, narcissistically injured by someone else. It's on a very base, grubby, definitely non-empathic level of trying to assert control over another individual that you were purported to have loved. It is the opposite of love, the total invalidation of another individual. It's a coping defense mechanism by the narcissist to assert control over you. And this brings me to the point of the video. If an individual does not know about the silent treatment, what it is and why it's implemented, they can go through a myriad of self-reflection, self-invalidation, thinking that you're not good enough, thinking that there, you did something wrong, thinking that not knowing about why this person has done what they've done, it enhances your cognitive dissonance because you need to get those answers on your own, but you're initially in such a state of shock that you're looking to the person who's causing the pain to discuss it with you so you can make sense of it. Because we have to, our brain tells us, we have to make sense of pain for survival. We have to you know, know how to avoid it. We have to understand it so we can have a solution. Well, the narcissist wants to keep your brain in turmoil so the brain can't figure out how to stop the pain. And the brain is telling you the narcissist has the solution to stopping your pain. So it really messes up you getting over and getting away from the narcissist and healing. And the narcissist knows this. So the key, the key to the silent treatment is to know what it is. And hopefully you've gotten onto YouTube and you've learned about what the silent treatment is. And this is one reason, guys, I'll ask you this video in particular, if you can share it, if you think anyone might need to hear it, because people need to know that this is a technique, a torture technique used by narcissistic and cluster B individuals. Because if we know what it is, we can take the power that it has over us, we can obliterate it, we can make it powerless. If you know that you're dealing with somebody who's so immature, who has such a lack of empathy, that they are unable or unwilling to talk to you, to acknowledge your existence. They're that fearful of not wanting to be accountable for themselves or accountable to you. They're that fearful of not having control. They're running away from their true selves to such an extent that they can't acknowledge your existence. That they have to punish you for existing and being better than them because they know that, but they cannot accept it. It's that pathetic. So if you can understand what it is and put it over there away from you and know that it's not personal, it's about a narcissistic person's inability to grow, to love, to exist, to be of any value in the world. If you know that and do not give it any power and totally ignore it and know that you are more than enough and know that it's happening because you are more than enough and not less. 
This is a huge narcissistic injury for this narcissist. This silent treatment business has worked for them the whole of their lives. And if they see you not chasing them, not giving them a reaction, not asking questions, it invalidates their existence in turn. So that the game they've used has flipped right back on them. They've attempted to invalidate you in your existence. And instead, because it's not working, they're invalidating their own existence because you're not giving them a reaction. Do you get it? So painful and hurtful as it is in the initial stages, because you desperately want to talk to that person, learn as much as you can, know what you're dealing with, see it as a very underdeveloped, pathetic attempt at trying to injure you, at trying to destroy you because they feel they feel so less than. Don't fall into the trap. And when they don't get a reaction from you, they, they become obsessed with you because they can't understand why it's not working when it usually works every time. And they begin to look in to themselves and realise that they don't exist, that they're not important. They have to look at themselves. They have to take accountability for what they've done. And they want to run from that as much as possible. So they then in turn obsess about you. And eventually, though this is not the outcome you want, you get an earlier hoover than you would otherwise. So guys, I hope that that's helped explain the silent treatment. You have the power to take the power totally out of this particular manipulation tool. It's down to you. You're the one in the driving seat with this. Don't give in to it. You don't have, giving in to it just is futile, is giving the narcissist supply and the power that they need. It's not helpful for the narcissist either. So this is one time with all the different tools that they use against us that we can use the same tool, just throw it back at them in their face, say, I don't want your tool of sorry, silent treatment, go and take that and give yourself the silent treatment. That's the solution to that one. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Let's grow. Let's get the word out there on all the platforms in YouTube spread the word. People need to know about it, particularly the silent treatment, which can send some people over the edge if they don't know what it is. Okay, guys, I can't even see myself. So I better put the glasses back on. Um, have a great day and I will be in touch with you again shortly. And any video suggestions, leave them down in the comments. And if you've any experiences of the silent treatment and how you dealt with it successfully, let us know. Let other people know. It helps. Thanks, guys. Bye. See you shortly. Bye.